It's a privilege and an honor to be asked to speak and give a few words to a very loving, gracious, compassionate, God-fearing woman that loved not just the Lord, loved her family, loved her church, and I don't think she ever even had any kind of limitation to her love to anyone. She left behind a good legacy to teach us how to love and how to be loved and how to show God's love one to another. She loved to come to church. I've had the privilege for a year and a couple months to be her pastor. I knew her uh, for about seven and a half, eight years. But uh, read this here. She was born on Thursday, August the 28th, 1930, 90 years, five months, and 25 days old in Appling County. 
She passed away and gained her earthly, her heavenly wings Monday, February the 22nd, 2021 in Waycross, Georgia. Sister Hilda was a, a woman that do anything in the world for you. She didn't care what it was for. Uh, if there was something to do at the church, she would do it. She would do it to her best ability, go above and beyond. But I got a couple of scriptures here that I wanted to, to read that really this first one really just describes Sister Hilda. It's in Proverbs 31, 25 and 27. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth of her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. She's done gone on. She's gained her wings. She's gained her heavenly home. We need to be envious of her. Say, well, why is that? Because you know what? She's not down here suffering anymore. But the Bible says, be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. And I can just imagine when she closed her eyes here on this earth, she opened her eyes up and was able to see our Lord Jesus. John 14, 1 and 3 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in me, believe in God, also believe in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Her goal was to see everybody and to lead everybody see Saul to the Lord. Her goal was to reach heaven. Her goal was to see her husband, and I believe she did. She has. She's spending time not just with our Lord, but with her husband. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you this afternoon, Lord, a beautiful day, Father. Lord, we thank you for the life that, and the time that you give us from Sister Hilda. And Lord God, we know, God, that she is up there with you, rejoicing, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more heartaches. But one thing she would love to see out of this funeral is someone to give their heart and life to the Lord. Lord, that was her goal, Father. And Lord, just ask you, Lord, to comfort this family in this time, Father. Lord, her friends and her family, God, her church family, we're all hurting, God. We know that we would love to have her here with us, but Lord, she wouldn't want to come back for nothing. But Lord, we know that just like the song says, her first day in heaven, oh, how beautiful it was and how beautiful it is. Lord, we just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and thank you for the comfort of your Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen.
This is something I've never done before, and I don't know how close I'm supposed to get to this microphone because I usually hold it right up here. <laughs> so I hope you can all hear me. And I don't have any notes or anything, so this is just right from my heart. Hilda and I were friends, close friends, for at least 14 years. And there's not a person here, if you're kin to Hilda or had some kind of relationship with her, that we didn't discuss. And I didn't get to know all of you from her lips. Even this morning when I was uh, getting ready, uh, many times people thought we were sisters, and I couldn't understand why they thought we were sisters because we were totally different in my point of view. But anyway, um, uh, very much unlike her, uh, I didn't have all my clothes laid out, so what I was going to wear today. So I said, Lord, help me to know what to wear today that would bring glory to your holy name. And uh, so I went to my closet and I saw this and I knew what we'd picked out for Hilda. And I said, well, this is my last time that I can uh, dress on purpose <laughs> to dress like Hilda because we'd go to church or wherever we went and people would say, did y'all plan this? We'd have the same colors and things on, you know? And so this is the way it was with us. We, we were really close. I don't think anybody could be friends and be any closer than Hilda and I were. And so we shared so many years. I remember when my husband died and, and uh, my son was there and Hilda said, uh, don't worry about Viro. I got her. You know, I'll take care of her. And she's done just that. And she told so many people that um, when they were talking, she would always mention my name and all that I'd done for her. But you know, as I looked at it, I could never see anything really that I'd done for her. But I felt like she'd done it all for me because she was a different person for me and she helped me in so many ways. She would look at, tell people, she said, Viru has always been sheltered. And uh, so, you know, I didn't know exactly what that meant, but she took me under her wings and, and showed me a lot of things that, that I really didn't know. And so, but the thing I think she would want me to say today to you, like Brother Mullally said there, uh, if you don't know the Lord, she would, she would, like, she would tell me many times, Byru, I don't know how to lead somebody to the Lord. You know, I don't know how to go about it. But if you don't know the Lord today, Hilda, I'm sure, would like for me to say to you, you can know him like she knew him. She told me when she was about 10 years old, she got saved. And then she said, you know, I went my way. You know, all through the years. Now she lived, if you knew her, you would think she's a real fine Christian woman, but she really didn't know the Lord in a personal way. So uh, when she came to our church one day, like myself, she come to Jordan one day and really led of the Lord to be there. And she come in just really with her shoes on ready to work. And uh, But she come into the church there and and one of our former pastors that are going, is going to speak to you today, they become real close. And as he preached the message of Jesus Christ, she came one day to the altar and renewed her life in, in the Lord Jesus. And she was totally, she was totally dedicated to the Lord and ready to work and do whatever that God would uh, want her to do. And then after her husband died and my husband died, she, the things that I didn't used to do because I, you know, I was married and, and couldn't do all the things, she made sure that I went out there and did these things like Camp Nikki and all. When she was there, I was there. We was always together and doing things. And so we did anything from painting to I don't know, what, whatever, you know, that the Lord would have us to do. We, we were ready to do it. And um, so I just praise God. There was 13 years uh, in our ages. So uh, as far as being close in, uh, like being sisters, well, we were sisters to a certain extent. But, you know, we, we just, and so, but I want to say to you today, if you don't know Jesus Christ, 
Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to say, Lord, here I am. I want to go the way she went. And then just be ready to go forth and do whatever God would have you to do. That's, I believe that's what she would say to me today. She would want this to go out from her because there are people that she loved and I, I loved and we wanted them to come into the house of God. And now is the time to let all the fear go in your life and come to the house of God and worship the Lord. Okay, thank you. And, uh, Her nephew is asked to say a few words. We want to let him come at this time. The first thing I want to do is, Barbara, thank you for being a, a friend and a companion. She needed that when she lost Uncle A.R. Yeah. And Debbie and Sandra. Sandra was there for at the end. Unfortunately, uh, the rest of us kind of got a little old and weren't able to take care of it, Hilda, Sharon especially, and we really appreciate you doing that, Debbie, also being there for her. For you guys that don't know me, I'm, I'm a nephew. My name's Ron Davis. And uh, unfortunately, God didn't bless and Hilda and Huckley all with kids, but they had many and they treated them like their kids. And most of you can attest to always made you feel special and she always uh, unfortunately or fortunately i would like to say that i was a recipient of that love and affection they had and they had so much and they were always included uh because not having kids of their own they were always included in our family gatherings for birthdays thanksgiving and christmas you know as a small child when they on my dad uh, it always excited me so much because i knew it was going to be fun when they came to visit you know, old folks, when they get together, all they do is talk, but, but you listen, and you learn so many things, and, and they were humorous and really funny, told a lot of funny stories, got excited uh, when they come to visit. Uh, and Uncle A.R., for us guys, he would come over, maybe on his motorcycle, maybe in his pickup truck, but he would take us for an adventure. And I call it an adventure because we never knew where we were going and where we were coming back. But we were the Uncle Ayara, and that's all it mattered. He was a great guy. You know, as I grew older, and I began to notice young ladies. And uh, one of the first things I wanted to do as I got old enough to date was take my girlfriend out to visit uh, Uncle Ayara and out in Hilda because uh, I knew it would be fun. And uh, they would treat you like company, like an adult. And for a 16-year-old kid to be treated like an adult, that's pretty cool, I thought. Uh, after, after school, most of you know, I moved to Jacksonville, and I've been there ever since. And, but I always come home to visit Mom and Dad, and uh, I, usually for the weekend. And on Saturday, I was always get out and go visit my relatives. And Uncle Aaron and Hilda was always on my list. And I, I had a lot of pleasurable hours visiting with, them, with my, son, my wife and I. And when we were visiting uh, with Mom and Dad, uh, Mom and Dad would get ready to go to bed around 10 o'clock. Well, most of you know Aunt Hill and Uncle A.R. 10 o'clock to them was like 8 o'clock. Because uh, as soon as Mom and Dad would get ready to go to bed, uh, we'd give them a call and say, Hey, you guys up? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why don't you come down and play cards? So we go down and play cards to the wee hours of the morning. And it, it was just so special to me and my wife to, to be able to go down there. And it, it, it was more like they were friends then aunt and uncle, but we had a lot of great times together. And after Uncle A.R. And, and my dad passed away, uh, uh, we would go and, of course, visit mom and dad, and, and, uh, or, or mom at the time, and uh, we would, uh, Sharon and Andy, every Saturday night, took mom uh, and Aunt Hilda, and Byru joined them quite often, out to dinner. And when Sandy and I came to town, it was our turn. We all got together and went out and had dinner. And she was, she, uh, most of you know, she was a very lively person, a fun-loving person, and just loved to go. She was like my mom. My mom, I would ask my mom, do you want to, and before I could finish the sentence, she would say yes. 
I said, Mom, how do you know what we get to do? And she said, I don't care, as long as we're out and we're together. You know, she loved her church. The preacher mentioned that. She loved her church, her family, and her friends. And she certainly will be sorely missed by us all. And now she's in heaven with Uncle A.R. and her family. And then Hilda, to quote an old Irish fellowship, until we get meet again, until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you. Anything that I would want to say to describe Hilda has been said. If you know her, uh, those words were, would speak for you. But it was my and my wife's pleasure to have pastored her and AR for several years. And in that, the adjectives that's been shared here today, we came to know too. Family, friend, compassion and love. But the first time that I met Sister Hilda and Brother AR, was in a cemetery. I'd finished the service at Jordan one day, spring day, beautiful. And she said, John, who's that? And I looked across the cemetery and I saw them and they stopped to look towards us and they were speaking to each other. I said, hey, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen them. She said, well, let's go talk to them. Said, right. Walked out there and we introduced ourselves to them. They introduced themselves to us. And immediately there was a connection like I know them. And we spoke and they told us that they had been planning to go to church that day, but they had run in late and they had, uh, was going to the church down the road. And uh, they were late, so they said, well, let's just pull in here and, and uh, look at some of our family's graves or friends' graves. And uh, so well, we talked and I said, you know, uh, if you live in Dixie Union, we're a little closer to church down the road, but we'd love to have you. Uh, come and be with us anytime. We shook hands and said, we might just do that. And I don't know how long it was. It might have been a week or two or three, but one day I looked up and they came through the door. And the rest is history. From that one meeting, they stole our hearts and we gave them a special place in ours. And today I stand in a cemetery not to meet or say hello, But to say goodbye. As I did in 2009 with AR. And Sister Hilda was going to be lost without AR. And we hugged and we cried and we talked about that. And I said, don't worry. You'll see him again.
And they're together, not just in interment in this cemetery, but with their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ in heaven. But when she came and we told them how glad we were they were there, It was a few days, or a few weeks, I mean, it might have been a, a few months. They were coming, and they started coming pretty regular, and I'm always glad to see them. And one Sunday, the Lord gave me a message on Noah's Ark. And the title of that was, It's Time to Get In. And when I got through preaching the message, it wasn't anything I did. But the words that God gave me and the movement of the Holy Spirit that was upon that place, when the altar call was given, Sister Hilda came. And she knelt there and prayed and recommitted her life to, to God and said that she wanted to know that deep personal relationship with Jesus Christ. When that was over and she stood up and we looked at each other and we spoke, I realized right then I got a whole lot more to learn about Sister Hill. She went down, Sister Hill, she came up. Sister Hill, do you understand what I'm saying? And she realized that if there was a time in her life where it was now or never, that it was time to get in that ark, to be sheltered, to be promised that, that she would be born over the seas of this life into a better place. And she got in the ark. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible tells us this. In Revelation 14. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I got here this morning and walked up to the casket. There was a brass plaque and her head stone. I said that. Or in her coffin. Sister Hilda's works are going to follow her. For anybody that's newer, anybody that knows her now, knew of her or heard of her, knew that there was something special in this lady that's not born there. Some of it may have been nurtured there, but it could only be fulfilled in her or anyone else by a deep personal relationship Through the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because we don't go to our knees as who we are and make that commitment to Jesus Christ and come up the same way. God won't allow it. You may have had a beautiful character, which Sister Hilda did. You may have had a, a beautiful spirit, which Sister Hilda did. But God wasn't through polishing it. Yeah. And when she came up that day, having recommitted herself to say, I really want to know this Jesus as he is. Yeah. She immediately rolled up her sleeves, committed herself to get to work, to know him, digging in the word, hearing the word, reading the word, for he is the word. Right. And in there she found the way that she should live her life.
she, and she, and she committed to live her life according to Matthew, according to Luke, Mark, John, Paul, and all the apostles, Peter, James. She wrote or read and, and, and wrote down those things in her heart and she let them come alive in her spirit and in her character. Why? Not because of some message that a, pre, a, a, a country preacher preached, not because of something that uh, a, a chance in, encounter in a cemetery, but because Christ had a place and a time set for him to meet her on a personal level. And when he did, she answered the call. Amen. Amen. Those memories bled into a lot of other memories. From there, we had a relationship where it was more like, as the brother said, aunt and uncle, brother and sister, even mother and father, but they are Sister Hilda, spiritual mother, spiritual sister. My heart grieves today that she's gone, but also my spirit rejoices today because I know where she is. And the works that she did, they will follow her. It may be a casual remark that you make to some person that may not even be here today about how God blessed that woman. What a beautiful spirit he placed in her. How her love reached beyond her circle of family to reach out and grab others and pull them in and expand that circle of family. How she had compassion for anyone who was in need. How she reached out to everyone who was hurting. Her and Sister Hilda, or her and Sister Byru would uh, be in the choir singing directly. I'd look over there and I'd see them speak to each other and their heads would nod. And right then I knew they went through singing. <laughs> and we would finish the choir singing and Sister Hilda and Sister Byru would get up and sing. I always enjoyed listening to them sing. Sister Hilda said, we don't sing very well, but we like to try. <laughs> God even blessed that. They were sounding like two morning doves and therefore it was over with perfect harmony. But she didn't just get that. She got it by working. Those of you that intimately know her that are here today have got a piece of her in you. Because she spoke it there. She placed it there by her actions, by her deeds. And her greatest desire would be that if you don't know her as her personal Lord and Savior, as she did, it would be that you come to that appointed place, that appointed time, where your path crosses where Christ stands. And when that Spirit speaks, no matter what you're doing, no matter where you're at, you'll yield to that call. Because the Bible tells us that no man cometh to the Father except by Him. And only that the Spirit calls. Still small voice that says it's time. Still small voice that spoke to her and said, it's time, Elder. We've got plans for your life. And from that day forward, she spent all her energy doing everything she could for the kingdom of God and for those she encountered and touched. Brother A.R. and Sister Hilda were so much alike in a lot of ways and so opposite in so many. But you could not get around them. No matter how bad you felt, 
no matter how rotten a day you might have had, that within just a few minutes you weren't laughing, you weren't glad to be in their presence. And today they are rejoicing together in the presence of the Lord. Whether your family or a casual acquaintance or friend of some family member, please hear the call of the Lord on your life and let it transform you into something you could never imagine you could be. Who can find a virtuous and righteous woman? For her price is far more valuable than rubies, gold, silver. I can't place the price on this fine woman. But her presence will be sorely missed in this community, brother in your church, Sister Viru, with you. But the thoughts of her shall linger on and carry all of us through to the day when the appointed time to breathe our last breath comes. And in the moment and the twinkling of an eye, we'll see her again. Amen. We're apart and we're walking. Yeah. We'll see her again. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no cursing, or no curse, but the throne of But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. She's in a place that is beyond description. John did a fine job describing what he saw in Revelation. But we can only imagine, as the song says, what we'll see when we get there. But she is seeing that Lord and Savior that called her so long ago. And she's seeing Him face to face. Her works are coming behind her and she's, she's rejoicing. Because she's telling Him today, I sowed all the good seed that you gave me. And I'm praying that it fell in good ground. And that it'll spring forth in the hearts and minds and lives of those I spoke to. And that it'll bring forth fruit. Mm -hmm. No more pain, no more suffering, no more sickness, no illness. She's healed. She's restored. She's made whole and complete. She's home. Amen. She's home. This is what she labored for. This is why she worked so hard. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are as counted as sheep to the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. She was assured in that love. And I'm here to tell you today, you can be assured in that love also. Would you bow your heads, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, our personal Lord and Savior, your Son, your Christ. The one who went to the cross and shed his blood and died for all humanity. Who called out in grace and mercy through the power of the Holy Spirit throughout the ages. Saying, come unto me, you are weak and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. We thank you that Sister Hill got tired and came home to you. And in that you renewed within her a new vitality to work and labor. And Lord, we thank you for the life that she led, the witness, the testimony that we are speaking of today. We thank you for that. We praise you for that. And Lord, we ask now that you would receive her and give her that reward. Place within her that light of eternity and that polished, full, unadulterated, unblemished love that she responded to so long ago. That she did her best to shed forth and share with all she met while in this body. And Lord, we just ask that those that are gathered here this day in this hour, if there be one that doesn't know you as personal Lord and Savior, may they remind and remember right now in their life the works of Sister Hilda, the testimony she lived before, the life she showed, and come unto thee. Amen. Amen. Live. Power to labor and power to love. Power to serve and power to suffer and if need be, power to die. None of us want to give up this life, but we know we must. The power to do so comes from God. So let us live as a people who are prepared to die. That's what you tell you today. And go forth from this place and die as a people who are prepared to live. Determined to know Jesus Christ. God bless you.